So we're moving into a new unit. We're going to take what we've learned about balancing equations and then come back and revisit them later. But we have to stop and talk about how chemists count things. Why? Because whenever we talk about production and chemical reactions, we're going to talk about yield. How much stuff goes in, how much comes out. And we have to be able to count that. But atoms and molecules are too small to see and count. So we're going to introduce the concept of the mole. I like to call a mole. The chemist doesn't. So you all want to know what a dozen is, right? So my package here from locally produced up the road. I have a dozen eggs. There are two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Of course, you all probably knew that. That a dozen is a way to count things in groups of twelve. I'm sure there's an interesting historical as to why that is, that it's 12, but that's what we're used to doing, okay? So 12 eggs equals a dozen, so no matter how many eggs, if I just divide by 12, I know how many dozen or what part of a dozen. So like if I have 48 eggs, well, dividing by 12, and the numbers on the bottom and the ones on the top I'm dividing, right? The eggs cancel as a unit. You didn't even do this in your head. You were just like, oh, divide by 12, yeah, 48 divided by 12, four, four dozen eggs. We're going to do the same kind of math. The same kind of math, it's just a different number. Okay? So how do we count atoms, molecules, and formula units? Because they're so tiny, we need a lot of them to be able to tip a scale. We can't actually see them and count them with little molecular tweezers. If we did, we'd be here forever. All right? So picture a box. A box that can hold 602 heptillion heptillion tillion, seven groups of three zeros. Otherwise, it's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Okay, this is where scientific notation writing is going to come really in handy. So 6.02 uh, 6 times 10 to the 23rd particles, all those little dots in there, fill one mole size box. And again, why mole? We're not talking about something that's going to eat your vegetables in your garden. We're not talking about a spy. We're not talking about something you want to go see the dermatologist to take care of. We're talking about a way of counting particles. Right? It's probably a truncated or abbreviated version of the word molecule. So if this is our number, just like 12 is our conversion number for a dozen, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd is our conversion, whether we're talking about atoms or molecules or formula units of an ionic compound, it's always one mole. So if I had 2.408 times 10 to the 24th atoms of iron, well, doing the same math, just that one might not be so easy to do in your head, that's why we're going to use calculators, it comes out to be four moles of iron. So, why the mole? As I've already kind of alluded here, uh, atoms and molecules too tiny to see, too tiny to count directly. It's not like my eggs where I can touch them, hold them, put them in a box. Uh, so they're too small to count directly. How do we measure anything in a chemistry lab? How do we measure anything in industry when we're talking about product? Most of the time, how do you buy things, either by volume or by weight? So in the lab, we weigh things. So we have to have a connection between how many particles and how heavy it is. Okay? So every mole of a substance has a weight, but things weigh differently because things have different densities. Hydrogen is very light. That's why when you put it in a balloon, it floats. Or helium is very light. Put that in a balloon and it floats. Because it's less dense than the air. The particles are lighter. Really, they're more spread out. If instead I made a lead balloon, that would sink. Why? Because the particles, the atoms of lead, have a much greater atomic mass. And when I pack them together, they're much more dense than air, so they drop like a rock. So everything weighs something different. Bricks and feathers don't weigh the same if I'm counting them. 
if I'm weighing a set amount, well, that weight might be the same, but if I'm counting them, they weigh different, so I have to account for that. So we go to the periodic chart. Remember that every element on the periodic chart has an atomic number that defines what it is, but it also has an atomic mass. And that mass is usually a value that has a decimal component to it. Why? Because there are different versions. We talked about it before, isotopes. And so that's the average atomic mass of all the slightly different versions that have more or less neutrons and might be more or less massive. We're going to use the average. So let me stick with iron. If I looked up in the periodic chart and found the box that has iron in it, it would have its atomic number, 26. And it would have its atomic mass, 55.8. I truncated it. It could be 55.847, I think, is what's in the version that's in your textbook. Okay? But that would be, that's the atomic mass in AMUs of one atom of iron. The interesting thing is, is it's also in grams the weight or the mass of one mole or 602 heptillion particles. Okay, Historically this was figured out by a guy named Avogadro. That's why this number 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd is named after him. He didn't name it after himself but later later people in the chemistry world said hey you know his work with gases and figuring out how we could count and relate volumes of gases to number of particles to how heavy they were is really important. So let's honor him by naming the number after him. So Avogadro, an Italian chemist, was the one that kind of did the work that gave us this number. So we call it Avogadro's number. Um, and so Avogadro's number of particles, which we say is one mole, always weighs whatever that substance is in the chart. And we're going to call that its molar mass. So for iron, the molar mass of iron is 55.8 grams, according to the chart. So any amount of iron I have, I can figure out how many particles there are there. So for example, if I had 27.9 grams of iron, well, divide by the molar mass, right? grams cancel, I'm left with moles, uh, I end up with half a mole. This is the kind of math we're going to be doing. I'm going to show you how to Use your calculator to put this number in the right way. Refresh your memory about that. I'll leave you some practice problems for converting between them to get a feel for it. This is some math skill to develop for everything that you do. And why this is going to become relevant is later we can go back and look at balanced chemical equations and just like recipes that have certain amounts that you put in and should produce a certain amount of food on the other side. You know? So, so much sugar, so much butter, so much flour, so many cups of chocolate chips, extra chocolate chips if you're making cookies for me. Mix that all together, eggs, whatever the recipe is. Only a certain amount of everything. If you put in too much or too little of something, it's not gonna be the right consistency, it's not gonna cook right. But whatever that set amount of the recipe will give you a certain number of cookies or should. We're going to take the same math that we're talking about here and use that to apply to chemical reactions kind of in the same way that converting to upscale or downscale a recipe would be done in a kitchen. So stay tuned.